Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be a video on my wash routine and how I style my fro hop. Highly requested from my crochet braid takedown video. So I'm going to get right into it. Let's waste no time here. It's going to be quick and short. I first start by finger detangling my cornrows and pulling out any shedded hair. I then take my essential oils and continue to finger detangle and spray the hair with a little bit of water just to make it more durable during the detangling process. This method makes sure that any possibility of damage or breakage is minimized. After the section is thoroughly detangled, I plait it and move on to another section. It makes it much easier for me to wash. As you guys know, black hair shrinks when it's wet and I have 4C hair so the shrinkage is real, you guys. So the key to retaining length and washing 4C hair is working in small sections. That way it's much easier to keep the hair manageable and reduce tangles and breakage. I'm using my Shea Moisture products here. I wash the hair, I then twist it back up again and work on another section. With Shea Moisture shampoos, if there is a lot of product buildup, then the shampoo will not lather. And that's because there's so much product buildup and also dust and dirt from having crochet braids in for two months. So what I do is I repeat this process until the shampoo actually starts to lather and that's a great way to know that your hair is squeaky clean. So as you can see there's a lot more lather in my hair on the second wash um, and usually if you do this well you'll only need to wash your hair twice. With this method it only takes me about 10 minutes to wash my hair. I've put a towel over my head to soak up the moisture but I never towel dry my hair guys. Never ever towel dry your hair. It breaks your hair, it roughs up your edges and it soaks up all the moisture in your hair that you're going to need for detangling and styling. Here I'm just adding some shea butter to the root and the ends of my hair and working that in, making sure to massage my scalp. I do the same thing with a few drops of essential oils and then I start to comb through my hair. So the small sections have actually reduced my shrinkage and it's so much easier for me to comb through my hair without any snags or the comb getting caught and ripping the hair. I also add some detangler and some leave-in conditioner to the end. Just doing a little bit of a length check here. As you can see guys, the shrinkage is real. My hair is actually just under my shoulder. So I just do a two strand twist and hold the hair about two to three centimeters away from the root and start the twist there. That makes sure that when I'm gonna take down these twists that I can retain my length and the curls don't look all shrinked and shriveled together. So you can see the full thickness and puffiness of your afro, which is what I'm going for. I don't really care about the separation being neat because the style that I'm doing, you're not gonna see my scalp anyway. So I do medium sized bantu knots. The smaller the knots, the more curl definition and I don't want really defined curls as I'm going for a messy fro hook. Also you don't want to do them too big because your curl definition will not last throughout the day. Okay so I've now done my whole head. You don't want to take these out before they are dry because you'll be very disappointed with the result. Make sure you give it enough time to dry. One eternity later. So to take these down, you are going to put a tiny bit of oil on the edges of your fingertip just so that you can take down these Bantu knots. You are going to untwist them like a bottle cap in the opposite direction to the way you twisted them. And you also untwist the two strand twists. So once you've taken all of these out, it's time to fluff it up. Hold your curl from the tip of the hair, i.e. from the end of the hair, and get your afro pick to the root and pull up once or twice. No more because you'll end up completely destroying the curl. Once you've picked out all the hair, there are different variations of styles that you can do and I'm gonna show you guys. You can just let it run wild and have a curly fro with a little headband, or you can do a high afro puff, but that's not what we're going for today. What we want to do is a fro hook so you're going to grab yourself some hairpins and start picking out the sides of your hair all the way up until you are satisfied with the height that you want. Then here I just grab myself some of my edge control. I use Care Care Edge Control. I just use a tiny bit, you really don't need a lot. And grab yourself a hairbrush and really smooth that out. As you can see my hair is lying quite flat. And then you're gonna get a hairpin and put the hairpin right in the middle of your head. And you're gonna make sure that the mouth of the hairpin faces towards your face. Your second hairpin you're going to put at the front of your head and you're going to make sure that this hairpin's mouth faces 
the back of your head. That makes sure that the hair stays in place and you've got all the hairs catching in the hairpin. At the back of my head, I'm going to push my hair all the way around to the other side and place my hairpins with the same method. On that side, I use around about six or seven hairpins. And then you just repeat the same process on the other side. And that's it, that's all there is to it. I'm just stretching out my curls at the moment. If you feel like you don't have enough curl definition, all you've gotta do is just grab the ends and twist them in the direction that the curl is going so that the curls come back. There you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Till next time you guys, bye.